read over and over again uh, on the forums the production boats and in particular Bavaria production boats are not very good for cruising uh, you know <laughs> watch my videos you make your own mind up uh, and I think that there's a lots of old-school thinking in uh, a lot of the comments that you read this is a lovely boat it does very very well very seaworthy I've been in some pretty tough weather conditions with it it hasn't let me down It's uh, right around that corner is my next destination. So what do you think of that? Uh, as a majestic guardian of the harbor. Wow. Entering the harbor of uh, Norfolk, which is the largest town on the east coast of Iceland, if I understand that correctly. Not too much wind, thank goodness. There's a lot coming down the fjord. These fjords are really tricky, you know. You, you actually get... A, the sails will back on you. Well, you'll do an unintended jibe. Or the, in the, because the wind just shifts as you're going through the fjord. It's time to leave this magical land of ice and fire. But when the sun goes down and the whales won't play, I'll always remember you this way. Thank you, Iceland. I had a wonderful time. The end here, finishing up, exploring some of the eastern fjords which are just as spectacular as the western fjords. I want to share with you one of the challenges of uh, passage planning, um, and that's to do with weather. And it also has to do with that adage, a man with two watches doesn't know what time it is. Let me share this with you. So here's what I'm planning to do tomorrow. I'm going to leave southeast Iceland, which is up here, and come uh, 250 miles uh, uh, down to the Faroe Islands. And now, on the European model, I just picked a point about a half a day out from my arrival there. On the European model, um, they say I'm going to have 15 knots from the, look at the direction of the isobars here. So, okay, that's a nice arrival. That's a, you know, um, I, I would love that. That'll be a nice, uh, you know, it, that's true wind, so apparent wind is going to it will make it more uh, uh, to the east, but certainly not uh, uh, not not problematic. Now let's change the model. That's the European model. The American model GFS shows the wind a little more robust, uh, almost 20 knots, 18 knots, but still the isobars are oriented north south, and I'm coming southeast, so that's really not a problem either. But now if I look at the predict wind models, and I don't know how they do that, you know, I'm, they apply a coefficient in their algorithms or something. Uh, but now the isobars are suddenly much, much more to the, to the east, you know, uh, and the wind is, you know, we're looking at 21 knots there. So that's true wind. So apparent, you have to need, need to add at least 5 knots, so that would make it be 26 knots, and the wind would be like this. So you, you know, I, I'm coming this direction, so it'd be, be very much, very uh, close to being close hauled. Uh, close hauled and 26 knots of wind, no one likes to do that. 
So that's the challenge. You have to pick which model you want to believe in. Uh, that's those, those are the kind of challenges you have to face when you're doing passage planning. Which weather model do you want to go with? Well, as I head out of the final fjord of my Icelandic visit on this cold, gray, wet day, uh, one could be forgiven by thinking that winter is coming. But such is not the case. I'm sure there'll be nothing but blue skies from now on. Si on se donne rendezvous dans dix ans. That might be a bit aggressive. We just entered a fog bank. There's probably uh, a quarter of a mile of visibility, maybe a little more. But I'm 50 miles out at sea. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing here on the AIS. And, uh, but it did make me think of a subject that's worth discussing very slightly. Is you can't really see it. It's below the uh, Windex up there. Is the radar reflector that you that you buy on a boat? And uh, there are a whole bunch of different kinds. I've got one that's uh, these one of the long tube things. It has uh, the different reflective shapes inside the, the plastic tube. There's octahedral designs. It's this thing about the size of a bowling ball that you hang up in the mast there. There's electronic ones that amplify the signal before they send it back uh, that, that, that's been received in, in uh, X-Band. And there's all kinds of shapes and forms. And uh, The only thing I know for sure is that the one that I have is next to useless. Uh, it's, <laughs> I read a technical test on the thing and I really should have replaced it, but uh, it said that mine was absolutely the worst one, those long plastic tube ones. I'm surprised they're even selling those things because they're so poor. So before you buy a radar reflector for your boat, do some research on it and uh, spend a few extra dollars or euros and get the, get the right one. Um, that's, that's not one of my uh, brighter ideas to install that one. 24 hours into uh, the passage from Iceland to uh, the Faroe Islands. And uh, been flying, it's been, been going very, very nicely. I had uh, with the mainsail up and two reefs in it, and the Genoa, not, not the state hill, the Genoa, I was doing between six and eight knots. It was really, really good. I did 155 miles in those first 24 hours, and I just flew. But I just had to drop the main, and let me explain to you why. So now, now what I've got is uh, the Genoa is out, and uh, the main is uh, main is dropped. The Genoa is furled to one or two points. The wind is supposed to pick up this afternoon even more. So I'll probably furl the Genoa and put the stay sail out. But let me explain to you why I did that. Uh, the boat was really flying, doing very nicely uh, with Genoa and, and two reefs in the main. But what would happen is every five minutes or so, right now there's 21 knots uh, directly a beam, 21 knots a beam. What would happen is every five minutes or so, uh, the, the, I'd get a guess to, to 28. And it would round up and, uh, you know, very violently and, uh, um, and then fall off. And, and then when it falls off, it overcorrects and almost does a jibe. Uh, and then comes back around. And I put up with that for a couple of hours. And so um, I tweaked the main as much as I could. I played with the, the um, how about the, um, the boom bang. I sheeted in, sheeted out. Uh, did everything it could, it's just when that big gust would hit, it would turn up into the wind. So I couldn't, uh, I just got tired of that after a few hours. And, and moreover, the wind is supposed to pick up another five knots this afternoon. So, uh, but that, so that's, that's one of the challenges you have. And, you know, every boat has its own personality. And, uh, you know, maybe a third reef would have worked. Uh, and for those of you who think that, uh, just uh, going with the Genoa is not a good strategy. Look at that, 7.2 knots, 6.8 knots. Uh, 
and uh, you know it's a little more rolly but you know seven knots j just on the Genoa uh, partially furrowed Genoa well here I am about uh, one hour out from my destination of Vestmana in the Faroe Islands and <laughs> once again I still got uh, 20 gusting to 25 uh, on the winds and uh, well those are uh, two to three meter seas um, but uh, uh, but the harbor is the harbor looks very protected. So hopefully, once I get in the harbor, it'll be a little less uh, exciting. The entrance to Westman Sound. Windy day. Challenging passage. The entrance to Vestmana Harbor, 23 knots. What he needs is a docking stick. Hello, could I get a glass of Chateau Neuf du Pape, please? No, we're Vikings here. We don't drink that. Try this. Ah, well, that'll do. Thank you very much.